The Invoke Lord of Bones incantation is dropped by Vorkath in both normal mode and hard mode, and it just received an absolutely massive buff. I wasn't planning on making a video on it, but after this week's patch, it's actually extremely good in certain spots, and it's worth testing out, so that's what I've done in this video. For starters, what does the Lord of Bones incantation do? Once activated, for the next 60 seconds, what's going to happen is your Skeleton Conjure is going to do the exact same amount of damage as it did before, but it's also going to apply a special debuff called Shattering Bones to your target. Shattering Bones reduce the armor rating of your target for every stack, and you get one stack every single time the Skeleton attacks, for the entire duration of the incantation, which is one minute. Although this patch does make the Codex a lot more useful than it was last week, because last week it was completely and utterly useless in every single scenario, it's worth noting that this thing is still pretty niche, because in recent years, RuneScape has tried to move away from reduced hit chance and splashing at bosses. Because of this, at any boss fight or encounter where you already have 100% hit chance, this incantation will do absolutely nothing for you. So let's focus instead on this subset of bosses where your hit chance is not always 100%, and as a result, you will end up doing reduced damage with necromancy or have a chance to splash with the other styles. We're gonna go through each boss one by one, I'll give you my thoughts, and then at the end, I'll hit you with a final verdict of if I think this thing is worth buying. This incantation is absolutely amazing at Virago, and here's why. It is completely lossless to apply this before every phase, and although your stacks are going to clear phase over phase, it's a really nice way to give yourself some additional accuracy without having to bring an Essence of Finality and a Stadius Warhammer swap. When you're first learning Virago, whether you're in solo or you're in a larger team, it is really easy for things to go wrong, especially on the last phase. And if the only form of accuracy you're getting is from a Stadius Warhammer, and you make too many mistakes, that one minute is going to pass, and then all of a sudden, not only have you lost a bunch of tiles and you put yourself in a bad spot, but you also will not be able to deal a lot of damage to the boss, which can compound your mistakes and make the boss even more difficult to understand and learn. And with Lord of Bones, it's the complete opposite, because as long as you're applying this losslessly during things like reflects and team splits, what's going to happen is the longer you go on that phase, the more damage you're going to be able to deal. And I found this to be absolutely awesome. Instead of having to worry about if my hammer is active or not, I just know that for the next 10 minutes and the entire remainder of the fight, I've got no issues hitting the boss at all. This was so effective that I was able to easily solo Virago without using a Stadius Warhammer or any other kind of affinity debuff at all. And the other advantage this has over a hammer is it's quite simply not a hammer. It's items I don't need to put in my invent, it's a switch I don't need to do, and there's no timing aspect to it at all. All I've got to do is make sure it's active and you're good to go. You're ready to rock and you should be able to finish off the boss. Theoretically, this should be extremely effective for the most difficult challenge of all, which is solo hard mode Virago. But obviously in this video, I don't have time to do that. Is that boss music? Okay, so I just used this thing to solo hard mode Virago. Going into phase 11 with an effectively permanent 100% damage potential is absolutely ridiculous, especially at a boss like Virago that is traditionally so incredibly hard to hit, and it made it so that I could make an absolute ton of mistakes and I was still able to absolutely cruise to this thing. I ended up completing this on my second trip to phase 10 and my very first try on the 11th phase, which is massively different than the outcome would have been without the Lord of Bones incantation. Without it, I would have had to consistently reapply a Stadius Warhammer every minute to a minute and a half. I would have lost out on an absolute ton of adrenaline, and I wouldn't have been able to use a Blood Reaver for healing because I would have been stuck on a Nihil. This thing is absolutely nasty for solo hard mode Virago. Got it! That is solo hard mode Virago! Done and dusted, and it only took an hour! Before we check out Telos, a boss that I have extremely high hopes for, I wanted to mention that if you're watching this video, you are probably not subscribed to my channel. If you want to see more of this kind of content, hitting the subscribe button helps me out an absolute ton, because subscribing is a great way to tell YouTube that you like what you're seeing and you want to be shown more of it. Telos is the only boss I tried out this incantation at where I can honestly say I think that it is by far the best in every scenario for every kind of player. The current Telos Necromancy rotations involve just not bringing a Reaver Ring, because the accuracy penalty on the Reaver Ring would make it so that you didn't have a 100% chance to hit. But that problem is completely alleviated because you're pretty close to 100 by default, and all you have to do is invoke Lord of Bones on the skeleton you were already going to conjure before the fight starts, and by the time that first phase is done, you will have a 100% hit chance. It will last for the entirety of phase 2, 3, and 4. Telos is historically a boss that's really, really hard to hit accurately, and I think this is a really great option both for veteran players as well as learners, because if you're just getting into the boss, you don't have the highest necromancy level, or you possibly just don't have the most experience, you're going to be drinking a lot of brews that will impact your accuracy. This is a great way to make sure that no matter what happens, you're dealing as much damage as you possibly can, and you're never getting below 100% damage potential. If you're an experienced Telosur, this isn't going to take off a ton of time from your kills, but it is nice and it is definitely best in slot. But if you're learning the boss and having trouble dealing damage, this could be an absolute game changer for you, and I would strongly recommend it. At Araxor and Araxi, the Invoke Lord of Bones Codex kind of works perfectly, because the first phase of the boss fight lasts exactly one minute. So instead of spending that first minute wasting your time or building up your stacks, you can actually build up your stacks while also making the boss easier to hit. 
This is extremely useful as these stacks are going to remain on phases one, two, and three. And although they will clear for Araxi, Araxi is generally speaking easier to hit anyways. So whether you're brand new to Araxor or you're doing what I'm doing in this video, which is some skips, it's extremely useful to have. Using this incantation allowed me to bring a much better setup that made my Araxi skips even more consistent than they otherwise would have been. Because I have a negative attack penalty for my Reaver's Ring, and this incantation also meant that I did not need the extra accuracy bonus from Annihil, and it allowed me to bring a different familiar. Whether that's a Blood Reaver or a Hellhound when you're learning, or a Calgarian Demon for more consistent skips and more damage, either way, this incantation was extremely good at Araxor, and I will absolutely be using it here in the future. Next up, it's time to master the beast, and I was expecting it to be extremely good here, but interestingly enough, my base accuracy at Beastmaster is already 97%, so because of that, the impact of this codex is not extremely significant. That said, at Beastmaster in particular, it's very commonplace to bring lower level players through so they can try to get themselves some mass cap ability codices. And because of that, I think if you're a necromancy base at Beastmaster, it is extremely likely that you're going to want to be using this, as even if it doesn't impact you, it will absolutely be helping somebody else on the team. The traditional way to debuff Beastmaster is to use a Stadius Warhammer, and although that is also a good option, it will only last one minute. So a lot of the time, at the most dangerous point of the fight when Beastmaster is enraged, you'd have to then reapply it or else everyone is going to do a lot less damage and hit a lot less accurately. So to me, this was a good option for Beastmaster, although in this specific scenario, it didn't help me out all that much. Yakabaru was a bit of a different story, and I'd recommend it a little bit less than I did at Beastmaster, where it was extremely easy for the base to apply it and give enough stacks for the entire boss fight. This is because at Yakamaru, every single pool is treated individually, and because of that, you're gonna be starting each pool with zero stacks. If you have a number of players on your team all using the incantation, which is what you're watching right now in this clip, you'll see that the stacks increase very quickly and it's not so big of a deal. But then you're having to constantly recast it between every pool, which is pretty expensive in terms of runes. And I think in general, considering how quickly the pools die anyway, my preference would be to just have one person on the team use a hammer on each pool. That's not to say that it's bad, and it did get our hit chance significantly better, but I think there are better and easier ways at this boss, and you don't really get to take advantage of the fact that it lasts 10 minutes. Anyone else have absolutely no idea that you could do Legios by just going in with Necromancy and letting your Conjurers absolutely body them? I was absolutely certain that Legios are a range-only boss, but apparently not anymore with the power of Necromancy. As for the Lord of Bones incantation though, it is absolutely not worth using here. It will not make a significant impact because you're going to be killing the boss before your skeleton has had time to apply more than five or six stacks. But yeah, crazy method. I had no idea this was going to work. Similar boat with the Court Beast. If you wanted to use this pre-fight, it would improve your kill time by a very, very tiny margin, but I wouldn't consider it worthwhile to do so, especially for an easier boss. This is not a place I'd imagine very many people will be using this although it did improve my hit chance by a little bit by the end of the kill. I did not have high hopes for this incantation at Angel of Death. The usual way to debuff Angel of Death is just to hammer the boss three times during the first phase. If you do that, her defense level will literally reach zero, and then for the entire rest of the fight, you won't have any issues with hit chance. But this went way better than I thought it would. I applied this losslessly before the fight began, and not one minute in, I was already on just about 100% hit chance. I didn't have to swap to a hammer or spend any adrenaline, and just like that, I'm good to go for the entire rest of the solo. If you want to learn how to solo Angel of Death or do any kind of small team AOD, this is going to be an absolute mainstay if you're using Necromancy. But what about for Angel of Death 7s? I think it's probably still easier just to have one person hammer the boss twice, but if every person on the team were to use Invoke Lord of Bones before the fight started, within 5 or 10 seconds of the boss fight starting, you'd actually have a 100% hit chance. So although it would require some coordination, and I don't think that's necessarily reasonable to assume that that is a thing that would happen, it would technically be better than a Stadius Warhammer. Overall, for Small Team Angel of Death in particular, this thing was absolutely awesome, and there could be some applications in Sevens in the future. Next up, let's go to Nex, and I figured it'd be extremely good here, and I was not disappointed at all. Because you can activate this before a boss has spawned or in a phase transition, it's completely lossless to apply it outside of the runes that you will be spending. And because of that, I found it a really great option at Nex. You don't have 100% hit chance by default at this boss, so it was as easy as activating it as the boss spawned, and then by the time I got to Blood Phase, my hit chance was pretty much perfect. Especially for someone learning next with either a lower necromancy level or lower tier gear, this is definitely the best and most recommended way to debuff this boss. Most of the other debuffs you could apply with necromancy only last a minute, and you'd have to consistently reapply them throughout the fight, which would be pretty annoying. But this is pretty much a set it and forget it increase to your accuracy, which in turn gives you more damage and smoother kills. Now that we've tried this out at a number of bosses, it's time for my final verdict, which is that although the Invoke Lord of Bones incantation is interesting at a lot of places, and there are some places where it's kind of sort of good or possibly a little better than anything else, this is an extremely niche incantation, and unless you're going for the Telos world record or you're trying to do some feat kills like Solo Angel of Death 
or solo hard mode Virago, this is probably not the most worthwhile upgrade you could get, especially at its 250 to 300 million GP price point. If the price continues to drop, I could see this being a really good low budget, no fuss option to increase your damage potential. But I think for most players who are still in the learning and understanding combat and working through upgrades, this should be pretty low on your priority list. That being said, if any of the use cases I described to you earlier in the video were appealing to you, it's a really good get, and I absolutely don't regret buying it. Still, this thing is extremely niche. It does exactly what it's supposed to do as written, it's just the thing that it does isn't necessarily that important anymore.